Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin on the Soil School today, and I am talking soil with Woody Van Arkel. We're down at his farm down near Dresden, Ontario. Woody, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Um, now you, these days, you're chair of the Ontario Soil Network. We know you as one of the most passionate soil guys in Ontario, always trying something. Um, talk a little bit about your philosophy. You, when you talk about soil health, you've got a, a few goals that you target. So. Yeah, I, I've over the years, kind of as this has all evolved, I've um, I've gone and developed ah, these three goals, I guess. And one is to keep the soil covered as much as possible, um, do as little tillage as possible, and to keep a living root system uh, in the soil 365 days a year. Uh, those are goals. I'm not there yet. I don't know if I ever will. And it also has to kind of fit in an economic model that I'm still making money. Yeah. Now a big part of keeping that ground covered for you, cover crops. You, it's something you've been at, you've been passionate about for years. Talk about, uh, I guess, some of the cover crops you've got on the farm now, maybe some of the mixes. So it's it's been an evolution as well. It started off as simple red clover. Uh, I've gone up to the multi-species, you know, the 16, 18 different uh, species. Uh, it gets complicated. Uh, I thought, well, I'm going to bring it back to simpler. I've gone back to red clover that we're standing in here. Um, and I want to get diversity through an extended crop rotation as well. So a combination of, of simpler cover crops and extended crop rotation. That's where my head sits right now. Mm. And you talk about living roots. I mean, a lot, there's a lot to that. Obviously, you want those roots driving through the soil. But you're also, uh, you know, you think about nutrient cycling. And also think keeping those nutrients present and in place on the farm. That's one of the goals for having the living root system. Uh, keep the fertility on the farm. Uh, create a habitat for the uh, the soil biology, um, and even in the strip till system, create a reservoir for healthy soil biology that can still migrate out to my strips as the cropping year goes on. Yeah. So talk about a little bit about the firm. Um, uh, soybean, wheat, corn in the rotation? So I'm a, a corn, soybeans, wheat, sugar beets. Uh, I'm exploring sunflowers this year. So I'm trying to get, looking at a couple of other crops, but I'm trying to extend my rotation out to a more diverse rotation than just corn and soybeans. Now one of those goals you talked about was reducing tillage, and uh, it's always a challenge, but you're growing a crop like sugar beets. That, how do you do that? So that's where the strip till thought first came into the, onto the farm was, was to do strip till for sugar beets. So as little tillage as possible. Um, it's actually evolved a little bit and I'm experimenting with no-till sugar beets. So the only tillage is really done is the, the field level and very minimal uh, shallow tillage to level the field after harvest and then incorporate a cover crop. Right. What are you known as an innovator? A tinkerer, always up to something on Twitter and, and building, you know, whether it be a cedar for, for interceding and stuff like that. Talk about some of the things you worked on over the years and, 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 you know, where they've taken you. So one of the biggest challenges I have is that the things I want to try, there's no equipment sitting on a dealer's mm -hmm. lots. So you create your own. Um, it's experimental. I don't, I'm cheap. I don't want to spend a lot of money on an experiment, so there's a lot of junkyard engineering by inventory, I call it. So it's taking old equipment and, and, and try to modify it so it works. Uh, I've modified a drill to do inner row seeding between corn rows, uh, the band sprayer to, to uh, spray out the strips in here ahead of the strip till machine, things like that. Uh, I'm still always looking for uh, towards a new interseeder slash drill slash bean planter that can do everything and with just minor modifications. Yeah. Always That's pushing the envelope and trying new things. And um, I want to talk about some of the, I guess, some of the trials you've tried in the last couple of years. And one of my favorites is uh, something you talk about Peter Johnson about all the time. And that is your 30 inch, sorry, your twin row 30 inch wheat. So. Moving forward in a project that I want to try, I want to incorporate a 30-inch farming system. 
but I want to put wheat in the system, so I've been playing with or experimenting with planting twin row 30 inch wheat that, um, and seeing if it'll compete or if I can come close enough that it still makes sense to put it in my rotation over a solid seeded wheat system. Yeah. And how's uh, it working out? It worked out good this year. Um, it actually gave me benefits of being able to wide drop nitrogen uh, on the wheat later. Uh, it eliminated the, the, the tracks where you would drive with a sprayer because now you have rows to drive between. So um, it worked. I've got another field in the ground this year to try it again. Uh, field right next to it is the same wheat, so I can do a yield comparison. Uh, I've done two different varieties, so I've got two different varieties in both of those fields to do uh, comparisons to see if that makes a difference as well. Awesome. So part of your philosophy managing your soil is figuring out what works on your farm um, and, and, and trying new things. We, we can't leave this interview without talking about what we're standing in here. You've uh, you strip tilling some corn into clover. Talk about what you're up to. So I have a, a stand of clover here. It's and I've done this a couple times already. What I'll do is I'll terminate just a strip, and I'll band spray that, and that gives me my um, place to plant corn. It's a I'm going to call it a, a safety net in the sense that I'm not fully planting green, but I still have a big benefit of leaving green. And then somewhere around planting time, whether it's after or before, uh, it'll be determined on what the clover looks like. Mm -hmm. I'll terminate this clover and uh, do some zero, um, zero fertility trials in here to see how much nitrogen I'm getting out of this system. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're going to get here? From because uh, obviously this is a pretty good-looking, healthy uh, clover crop. Uh, a lot of end credit here. Uh, I'm thinking at least half of my end requirements. Now, having said that, there's also manure on here. Yeah. So Cause, with the manure, because you're also running a hog operation, right? Yeah. So with the manure and the red clover, I think I can produce enough here that I can grow a crop of corn without supplementing NN. Yeah. That's, I think I can do. Uh, like again, I'm going to put in some strips where I'm going to put N on just to see if I am losing anything. Yeah. And I'm going to take it to an economic number. So it may not be the highest yield, but it'll be because I'm not buying N, I'm not applying nitrogen. You know, that brings the numbers into, into the equation. Yeah. So what do you, I, I got a question for you. And that is, uh, you know, you, you do so much. Uh, from a soil health perspective on your farm. Um, you know, uh, some of it turns out, some of it doesn't, but you keep going, you're always pushing the envelope. Why? That, that's a, a question I struggle with, um, but it, it, part of me tells me it's, it's uh, I'm gonna use the phrase, and I, I don't know, I can't quote it, I can't tell you who did it, but it's that you don't inherit the soil from your father, it's that you're born it from your children. So I guess, uh, seeing what some of the soils, some of the, uh, what tillage and long-term short rotations have done, um, I'm hoping to reverse or at least maintain what I have here so that down the road that there's a functioning soil for the next generation. Yeah. Hey, um, great insights today. Hey, we'd like to come back and check out how the corn is gonna make out in your uh, in your clover and uh, see what you get up to. Is that is that okay? It is. It'll be. Um, I'll show everybody the the ugly and the, and the good. So I think uh, it'll be all right. Hey, um, thanks for the invitation. Great to catch up with you here, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us on Soil School. You're welcome.